Hi, this is Ezra Barani, and I'm going to show you how to do the barometer lab. The first thing you want to do is get all your supplies. One of the things they asked you to do was to get a coffee can, which turns out to be um, way too big, in my opinion. So you want to get something the height of this index card. So what I'm using is I'm going to use a can of, in this case it's a vegetarian chili. You can use a can of whatever you want, whether it's a can of peaches, a can of, uh, let's see, baked beans, something like that. A soup can, but um, essentially that's going to be the right height. So um, the first thing to do, you're going to need to empty that can. So uh, here's the first thing you're going to do. You want to open that can. You want to dump the contents of that can in the pot. You want to heat up the contents of that can. Put cheese on the contents of that can. Eat the contents of that can. Mm. Wash the contents of that can. So, it says that you'll need a large balloon. I was unable to find a large balloon, so instead I went to my local drugstore and got these latex gloves. Really cheap. Two bucks for a pair of three. Under three bucks for a pair of three. <laughs> Something like now, that. Now since the glove is already folded, all I had to do was cut a semicircle, and then once that was cut, I could open it up into a full circle, and I put it on top of the can with a rubber band. So the instructions said to use a straw for the lever. Now I'm going to use two straws attached together. The reason is because since I'm using a smaller can, the effect will be smaller. So if I had a small straw, um, it would only affect a little bit. However, by cutting a slit in each one and then attaching it this way, now the law's ex straw is extended so that if there's any slight movement, it becomes a much bigger arc at the long end. So what I did was I attached the straw to the top of the can with glue. I used white glue and it takes a long time to dry, at least 24 hours. Uh, the reason I didn't use tape is because that tape will eventually loosen and the reading will slide down. So you want to use glue. Now here I attached, I used tape to attach the uh, pin to the end there, and, and that's fine. Um, so, uh, once you have this, we'll move on to the next part. As you can see on the back of an index card, I made lines in millimeter distances, and I alternated it between blue and orange, just to make it easier to read. What I did was I found out I logged on to it was www.weather.gov slash om slash osd slash portal like the video game dot shtml and I found out that the barometer reading today was at this time 30.08 inches of mercury that's in.hg. And I converted it to millibars by multiplying it by 33.86. And that's all in your instructions in the student guide. So it came out to 1,018 millibars. So I taped it to the wall. And as you can see, my barometer is on the table and it's against the wall. This is actually much easier than using all that modeling clay. This was an awesome, awesome suggestion given by Miss Barnes. So, that's a good idea. To tape it on the wall and put this on the table. And what's going on? So now we have our barometer. What is the barometer? The barometer is testing how much pressure there is on the outside and it, it essentially is measuring air atmosphere pressure. Hey, okay. So you may be wondering what if your barometer reading gets higher and rises? 
Well, that means that a cold, dry air mass is approaching. Now you may be wondering, what if your barometer reading goes lower, decreases, yet the temperature is increasing, and there's it's cloudly, cloudy outside? Well, that means rain is a coming. That is how you build your own barometer.